my god, I left one out. The reverse scapular can never rotate the scapular to downward. The reverse scapula can rotate the scapula to downward. <sighs> Are you sure? Alright, then show me. Usually, the reverse scapula make the downward rotation of the scapula. Look at this. And now, it's the function of the scapula number one. It's the elevation of the scapula. Let me try again. It's the function of the scapula number two. It's the adduction of the scapula. Yes, that's right. I still lose in episode 13. This time, try downward rotation your scapula. When your scapula rotates to downward, does it go down or up? It goes down. Exactly. If the scapula goes down, the libido scapula will stretch. It's the opposite function of the concentric contraction. As you have seen in the last episode, the scapula is raised and very few people rotate downward at the same time. You can see the downward rotation of the scapula in people with a depressed shoulder. A depressed shoulder means a stretched rear scapula length. I think so. Try to downward rotation position by rising your scapula up. It's too difficult. It can make it difficult. You rarely meet people who are in such a severe position. Besides, it plays a more significant role in the rhomboid muscle. When the shoulder is elevated, the upper trapezius is also working. The upper trapezius has the function of the rotate the scapula to upward, and acromial clavicular ligament will give the limitation of the downward rotation to the scapula. Then can't the libid scapula rotate the scapula to downward? The downward rotation function of the libid scapula is tough task in the SD joint, but that's an effortless task for the AC joint. Mm, I don't understand. Yes, to understand the function of the downward rotation of the libid scapula, we should study the scapular thoracic joint and the acromioclavicular joint. The ST joint consists of the scapula and the back wall of the thorax. Unlike the universal joint, this joint does not connect bone to bone. The movement in the ST joint is scapular elevation, depression, retraction, protraction, upward rotation, and downward rotation. We usually talk about the ST joint when we're doing a posture evaluation. For example, the scapular upward rotated posture refers to the upward rotated position of the ST joint. The AC joint consists of meeting the acromion of the scapular and lateral ends of the clavicle. Movement at the AC joint is upward and downward rotation of the scapular. It also acts as fine control for the scapular movement. Did you understand what ST and AC joint are? When the scapular elevates in your ST joint, there are two options in the AC joint. Option 1, when the scapular is elevated in the ST joint, the scapula can be rotated upward in the AC joint. Option 2, when the scapula is elevated in the ST joint, the scapula can be rotated downward in the AC joint. Option 1, the libid scapula stretch when the scapula rotates upward at the AC joint. At this time, the upper trapezius and stratus anterior muscle will cause concentric contraction. Option 2, the libid scapula don't stretch when the scapula is rotated downward at the AC joint. The libid scapula also the upper trapezius will concentrate contraction. I'd like to tell you that to understand the function of the downward rotation of the libid scapula, you must understand the AC joint. 
In the postural evaluation, the levator scapula seems to be difficult to rotate the scapula to downward. But this is a limited description of the AC joint. The levator scapula were rotating the scapula downward at the AC joint. If you can understand the movement of the AC joint, you can distinguish between the following two body types. A has elevated her right scapula. At the same time, her AC joint is rotated upward. B also has elevated her right scapula, but unlike A, her AC joint is rotated downward. The levator scapula rotates the AC joint downward while elevating the scapula. The upper trapezius rotates the AC joint upward while elevating the scapula. Both A and B have shorter upper trapezius and levator scapula. But the AC joint of B is more rotated downward than A. So B's levator scapula would be shorter than A. Of course, you have to take the wrong voice muscle. Let's study about that next time. Let's summarize this study. We need to understand the ST joint and the AC joint to explain the movement of the scapula. Remember the following two options. First, the AC joint is can rotate to upward when the scapula is elevated. Then the levator scapula will stretch. Second, the AC joint, the scapula can rotate to down when the scapula is elevated. Then the levator scapula will cause concentric contraction. For the first time, I've created an episode under the theme of joint, not muscle. I hope you will also enjoy studying the joints. And sorry for that my explanation is not enough, but I'll try seriously all the time. Draw the ST joint and AC joint, and move your shoulders and think of the complex movements of the two joints. You can tear it up. The ST joint. The AC joint. If you want to see more pictures, check in my Instagram. I hope today's video will help you to be a genius of that type. See you soon, guys. Genius. <laughs>